It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey, hey, everybody. Today I am taking a look at Dastardly Dirigibles. In this one, you are all inventors in a very steampunk setting, of course, and a professor, a famed professor, has announced his retirement. You are all competing to see who will earn the right to commandeer his factory. And the game is a simple card game, sort of a rummy-esque card game. Let me show you how it works, and then I'll tell you what I thought of it. So here's what the game looks like set up and ready to begin. This is for three players. The game is going to be played over three rounds. At the end of each round, players will score. And then at the end of all three rounds, the highest score is, of course, the winner. On your turn, you are going to be taking three actions after you draw back up to five cards. We've obviously started with five here. And those actions are as follows. You can play a card to your blimp here. And so, for instance, I can play this card. The cards have a suit, in this case, top hat, and it tells you what part of the ship it is. In this case, this is a tail. I'm going to play that to the tail. I will announce it to the other players because if they have a tail, they must also play it. This player does not have one, so they would not do anything. And this player does have one, and only one, so they have to play it. Uh, to the uh, tail of on their blimp here, okay? And then for my second action, I could play again. I could discard, that's another option. I can switch one of my cards in my hand with one from the three face up, or I could wipe these three away and flip three new choices there, okay? So that could be my first play. Then I could play, let's say, a drive engine, and I'm going to play the drive engine there. Now this drive engine is wild, so it's any suit. And again, all the other players would then take a look at their hand. And if they have a drive engine, they have to play it, whether they want to or not. Sometimes you don't really want to, uh, because you are trying to uh, have a lot of the same suit. That's how you score. And then let's say for my last action, I would just discard a card. And the reason I might discard is because I have another drive engine and I don't want to have to uh, play it over this one or whatever, okay? So that could be my action. Uh, I could also wipe these, whatever you want to, okay? And then it's the next player's turn. The first thing they do is draw back up to five. They can draw from the deck or they can draw right from here. So they could take this card, replenish that, and then take this one and now they're back up to five and then take their own three actions. This is going to continue until someone has completed their entire blimp. At that point, we are going to score up. You are going to get two victory points for each card you have of the most common suit you, you uh, have among your blimp. So, let's say you have three cards of the same suit, all the other ones are different, you are going to get six victory points. Besides that, if you have any wilds, they also will count, but there'll be a single point each. So three cards of the same suit and a wild seven points, okay? Uh, we are going to give you a bonus two points if you're the one that triggered the end of the game by completing your blimp. If anybody else also completed it, they get one point as well on top of their regular scoring. And then we clean all this up, shuffle it all up, and then, uh, you know, we start again. We play three rounds, as I said. There's also the option to kind of shoot the moon, which is if you can make a blimp where no suit repeats and there are no wilds, then you are going to get a flat 20 points, which is really good, also really hard to do, okay? So besides the blimp parts, you also have a few action cards, as you can see here. I'm just going to give you a close-up look at a few of them, but basically they are variations of take that cards for the most part, draw cards from your opponent's hands, make them discard cards from their uh, dirigibles, uh, you know, force them to do something, uh, whatever the case may be. There's a few that give just you benefits, like draw some and keep uh, some, uh, things like that, search the discard pile in this case. 
Uh, so they they add an element of uh, of chaos and an element of take that to the game, but they are not very plentiful. There's a handful of them, but that's pretty much the game. Continue playing over three rounds. Most points at the end of those three rounds combined is the winner of the game. I really like the look of this game. For one thing, I love the the artwork in it. I like the setting in it. It's a very cool game. The production quality of the game is all right. The cards are fine. The little paper mats here are okay. You know, they're they're not that important. So I mean, anything could have would have worked, and this is okay. Uh, I don't know how they're gonna hold up over many, many, many plays, but it should not be a problem. Uh, the gameplay itself, I liked for the most part. I thought the game was cool. I liked the special powers of the cards. I liked the concept of uh, messing with other people in sort of an indirect kind of way sometimes by playing a card that makes them play, you know. I like the idea of sometimes uh, wanting to discard cards and then seemingly being in a weak position but also being in a position where no one can force you to play a card you don't want to play. So I like most things. The one thing I did not like is that the rounds are pretty slow and so on your turn while you are drafting back up to your full hand size, deciding what to do with your actions, there's nothing for the other players to do first of all and there's a decent amount of waiting. You know, it would appear that there isn't if you just read the rules and, and uh, thought about the game, but when you play, there's a considerable number of uh, actions you have to sort of puzzle through and how they affect other people around you. It's a game I would not recommend with more than, say, three players, unless you have a lot of patience and don't care, you know, to have to deal with downtime. I would not want to play with five. Because, again, I'm just going to be sitting there with, you know, every, you know, every now and then having being affected by something, but not really having to do anything for a decent amount of time. So that's my main issue with the game, the downtime, the, the way it scales. But besides that, I liked it. I think it's a neat card game. It's one I would recommend to people that enjoy the rummy-esque aspect of the game. You know, the set collection idea. People who like the steampunk setting, the, the blimps look really cool when you build them. The artwork is neat, the special cards are neat. So the game works well. I like it, I just wish it was a little bit faster. But overall, thumbs up from me. Check this one out if you enjoy the genre. If you're looking for a cool card game that gives you a, a neat new setting perhaps, look into Dastardly Dirigibles. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.